Nigeria is building for the future, from vast developments in Lagos to cutting-edge design in Calabar, for business, tourism, and sports. Welcome to Nigeria. Welcome to Inside Africa. On this week's program, a new city for Nigeria, reshaping, reclaiming Lagos. A nest for the super eagles. We visit Uyo's new stadium on its debut and the exciting new structure rising on Calabar's riverbank. There's a lot going on and up here in Lagos right now. From the tallest building on Victoria Island so far to one of the largest purpose-built churches in the whole of Africa to David Adjaye's new concept store nearing completion here in the city center. And then, there's this. An entire new area of Lagos rising from the Atlantic Ocean. Apartments for a quarter of a million people, workspace for 400,000. CNN first visited the Eco Atlantic project in 2009. That was soon after they'd started to reclaim the land from the sea. Now they're building. Hello, Mr. Frem. Hi, sorry. And Welcome. we've come back Welcome. to see how close they are to realizing their vision. The managing director of the Eco Atlantic project says it began partly as a way of protecting Lagos from flooding. The original coastline in 1910 was actually here. All this land, which is in some parts more than two and a half kilometers deep, has been lost to erosion over approximately 100 years. And that's what you're reclaiming? We're reclaiming all that land and building a very robust seawall along the southern edge in order to protect Eco Atlantic, but in turn, to meet the request of the Lagos State Governor, to protect Victoria Island, which, if we go back to 2005, was under very real threat of being devastated by coastal surge. They've reclaimed land to just over halfway along this map and started building on the western end nearest to us as we look at it. One of David Frame's colleagues uses an augmented reality app to bring the plan to life. What do we have here, Vienna? Well, basically, I'm trying to show you um, the reality of what we're trying to build on the marina district of the Eco Atlantic City. We have so far started on with um, this side of things. Um, it's in the bane of the marina district. It's super luxury. It's basically setting a lifestyle which Nigerians are used to and most of the people in diaspora keep asking a question. I want to come back home but to where and to what? So we've done a lot of studies and discovered that yes most people want to come home to settle back at home most professionals but there's a gap between what they're used to externally and what they what there is pr um, presently on offer so how far have they got what's actually happening on site time to see for ourselves they've reclaimed just over five square kilometers of land first they sucked up the sand from the seabed 25 kilometers offshore, an area that has the right grade of sand which compacts well. Then they pumped it behind the seawall. This is one of your bridges? The first thing we came across was a concrete bridge, one of 10 that will span the canal network here. So how do you support huge loads such as this on reclaimed sand? Basically, there's no major difference. Um, the bridges here are all on piled foundations. Um, we have uh, 10 structures plus two underpasses that we're constructing, and they're all on piled foundations. So all you have to do is take, take the foundations down on to uh, sound ground. And it's not just bridges. This main road, one of the features of Eco Atlantic, should be completed by the middle of next year. 
this to me doesn't look far from a complete road. Yes, we're very close to completing our first section of the Central Boulevard, which we call Echo Boulevard, in the uh, Central Business District. So this entire carriageway, if you take to the extremes of the footpaths, is 60 meters wide. It's the equivalent of Fifth Avenue in New York in terms of width and almost exactly the same length. So this is where the uh, financial institutions will establish their headquarters and the goal is to establish Lagos as the financial hub and commercial hub of the continent of Africa. Eco Atlantic have a concession from the government both to develop this land and to operate it. They'll have their own power supply from natural gas their own water system, and their own sewage treatment works, all protected by this. We've now come right to the southern edge of the project, and from here, I can hear the deep sound of the Atlantic Ocean. And if I climb up here, you can see the massive extent of this wall. In the end, it's going to be eight and a half thousand meters long. And so far, they built 4,700 meters of it. In total, they estimate they'll use 8 million tons of rock. But there's a further stage to go just yet. We continue this layer of rock to approximately here. And then on top of that layer, we cast a solid concrete wall, which is called a wave wall, that runs the entire length. Once that is cast, we continue with the rock and the acropods sloping upwards so we reach a final crest level of eight and a half meters above sea level. And that is the final structure of the seawall. From here, you can clearly see the progress. That's the seawall being built. And over there is the land that's already been reclaimed and is being developed. Over the next few years, all this area back to Victoria Island will also be reclaimed and built on. It's been financed by private investment and loans. Now, they are also getting income from deals with partner developers. We could see some of their towers starting to rise out of the ground. Where are we now, Mr. Frame? Well, we're now on the western boundary of the site. And we're looking across at one of the first developments. Uh, and it's actually the most advanced of all the early developments. This is a commercial building. It's the headquarters of an oil and gas company. And it will be, when completed, 15 stories high. This looks to me like the most complete the structure I've seen so far. Is this the first piece of land that was bought? Yes, in fact it is. It's a strange coincidence, but it's the most developed so far. It will be the first completed. But on the uh, receipt, when the land was purchased, it says 0001. The first piece of land purchased on Echo Atlantic. So, with people due to be working in offices here by the end of 2015, all the first phase infrastructure finished by then too, and the marina district following on, that table plan we saw earlier is coming ever closer to reality. 20 years from now, you're going to have a substantial population living in Echo Atlantic. So there's going to be an exciting period over the next 10, 15, 20 years. Next on Inside Africa, we head southeast to the brand new Nest of Champions. Welcome back to Inside Africa in Nigeria, where we're looking at new building and architecture. We've already seen one vast project here in Lagos, but there is also a great deal happening elsewhere in the country. This is Uyo, capital of Akwa Ibom State in southern Nigeria. They've just completed one of the most modern sporting stadia in the whole of Africa. 
We are on our way to take a closer look at it on what's going to be a very big night for both Uyo and for Nigeria. It is a big match. South Africa versus Nigeria and the Super Eagles have to win tonight to make sure that they qualify for the African Cup of Nations. Let's go. This 30,000 all-seater stadium can host both international football and top-class athletics. It's a state-sponsored project and watching from the VVIP area as Nigeria go one down is the governor of Aqua Ibom State. At halftime, he still manages to be upbeat about the new structure. In terms of comfort, in terms of standard, there is nothing to add. It is a complete stadium that will produce future champions and future athletic champions and future football champions. This is a dream fulfilled for me, that we can have an international event of this magnitude being uh, played in Rio, the capital of my state. I feel highly elated and I feel fulfilled. Well, it's a beautiful building, but it hasn't been a great night for Nigeria on the pitch. They've just drawn with South Africa in a critical match, which means they're out of the African Cup of Nations. But we shall return tomorrow when all this crowd is gone and have a closer look at this lovely building in Uyo. The steel supports were precast with this distinctive curve. That allowed them to be sunk into the concrete pillars to carry the stadium's most recognizable feature. Even in the day, and especially as light fades, it's the shell-like exterior, the nest, that first strikes you. 19,150 square meters of acrylic glass, all shipped in from Austria. How are you, sir? Yeah, I'm fine. My name is Sonny. My name is architect Imeko. As the supervising architect takes us round, he highlights how carefully considered the functional aspects of the stadium are. From the high number of exits for speedy evacuation, to the 20 pipes under the pitch for rapid drainage, and the evenly distributed floodlights. You can see the floodlight is not the traditional Float light on pedestal. We have them under the roof, and there are about 300 of them. So if you come here in the night, it's just like being in the day. One of the features of this stadium is this bulletproof glass. Which is why you couldn't really hear me. As I was saying, one of the features of this stadium is this bulletproof glass. With visiting dignitaries, you can never be too careful. Aesthetically, too, there's attention to detail. The concrete sections were vacuum lifted into place to avoid marking them with hooks. And the seats mingled the orange of aqua ebom with the white and green of Nigeria. But most agree it's the steel and glass that will set this stadium apart for fans. The statement is architecture is a frozen music. What I'm saying is frozen is that you don't hear the sound, but it's still singing. This piece stands out as one in Nigeria and I would say second in, in, in Africa. But of course, the true test of the stadium won't be about how it looks, but how it's used. The big match passed off smoothly, except for the results, of course. But it will take a few decades to find out whether the nest can fulfill its true purpose and inspire and incubate the future sportsmen and women of southern Nigeria. Next on Inside Africa, cutting edge architecture in Cross Rivers, Calabar. Welcome back to Inside Africa in Nigeria. Just to the east over the river from Uyo lies Calabar, capital of Cross River State. And on the river bank, something quite special is taking shape. So you have uninterrupted views around you, and that is what this is all about. The project manager's enthusiasm is infectious. That is absolutely incredible. It's clear 
This is not your average municipal conference center. For a start, there's the setting, just up the river from the center of Calabar. You sit here and you see the, the lake and the Tinapa River there in context. We bring people here to function and they come into a very unique ecosystem. Now what we've tried to do is along this whole front facade, there isn't a single column to interrupt your views. It is all glazed. Glazed along all the three blocks. We said there's block A, B and C. The total front facade is glazed. With these deep beams that can't live that structure, that really, it's gonna be one of the deepest around, certainly around West Africa. Of course, being surrounded by a river, a lake, and marshy ground creates its own challenges. We're building on a hillside, on a fairly unstable ground. So what we had to do is we had to pile, there are many deep piles to get to good bearing pressure for this building, which is a very heavy building, concrete structure sitting on there. Then there's the slightly quirky design. All right, here is another of the staircase that brings you from the car park. This is between block B and block A. And again, you can see that there is a lot of drama going on here in terms of, yes, you know. And again, another link from the skylight down to the front here, where we'll have another entrance bringing people in. So again, you've got a lot of drama happening here, which is something that the architects wanted to achieve. I mean, it's a monumental building. It is the form that is supposed to make a statement of intent. Now, there are two ways in which you can do something like that. You can either make it busy or glaze, all that sort of thing, to communicate. Or you can just use the form to simply make a statement. And this was a winning bid. And it was a form, really, that did it for everybody. But the really clever stuff is out of sight, in more ways than one. Now, standing here, your building is supported. As I, as I step here, right through to the end, there is no column. This thing is just cantilevered. That is absolutely incredible because you would expect this heavy structure to just drop. Everything that you see here, from that point where I step across this side, is all floating. A cantilever works a bit like a children's seesaw or a crane. The load or compression on one end of the beam supports the load placed on the other end with a balancing point in between. Huge props supported the building until it was time to allow the cantilever to take the strain, all 1,500 tons of it. As the props were gradually removed, everyone held their breath. But the building stayed where it was. The calculations were proved right. It only settled by 19 mil. And get this, the structural engineers had predicted that this building will settle by 19 millimeters. And we measured it precisely 19 millimeters. So, fewer supporting columns, more uninterrupted views. In this country, uh, to the best of our knowledge, it is the first of such technological advancement. Everybody was excited. The chief executive of the state, the governor, was invited there with his entourage. And uh, it was really after that we had to pop champagne because at the end, because in fact, everybody was apprehensive because uh, removing the structure, the apprehension was there as if, ah, well, how can this thing stand? You know, because it's not resting on anything. The entire edifice is unique. You look at it from the northern side, it is uh, it's just standing like uh, a miracle because it doesn't look like something that will be able to sustain itself. Sonny, this is what I was talking about. I mean, wow. that is the sort of view that you get from here. And you can see the setting, the sort of setting that you have this building in. And once we finish with all the landscaping around them, the access road snaking around to the top of the hill, you have a sense of the grandeur that this form presents. Built to impress and attract visitors to the area, Cross River State is a lot greener and more temperate than much of Nigeria. It even has tropical rainforest. What it doesn't have is the revenue from oil enjoyed by some of its neighbors. So it needs to increase its income from visitors, both business and individual. 
In fact, this Calibre Conference Centre is just part of a wider project called Summit Hills. They are also building housing, a hospital, a hotel and this 18-hole golf course. All designed to attract tourists. If you look to the other side of the Tinapa Hotel, uh -huh. or what they call the Lakeside Hotel, right, you see a patch of brown dirt. That is the monorail that is under construction. And what it does, it, it links Tinapa to this facility. Because remember I made this point earlier that in architecture, it's not just about a building, you know, but it's what is the whole concept? What is the whole idea? What is the vision? And the vision for this thing was to drive tourism in Cross River State and to link Tinapa to the rest of Calabar. The statement is the arrival of the state. This state has arrived. We are making the move into the future. This is it, 21st century. We are trying to create something that is uniquely Calabar Cross River State. But this Calabar development does have something in common with the Uyo Stadium and Echo Atlantic. All three are the initiatives of their respective state governors and demonstrate the role these figures play in developing Nigeria's infrastructure. And with elections next spring, no one wants to leave office without a concrete legacy. Groundbreaking architecture in Calabar, and the conference center is due to open this coming April. Well, that's it for this week on Inside Africa, but you can find us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, or go to our website, cnn.com forward slash Inside Africa. From Miss Sonny, goodbye or audible. Oh yeah.
Oh, oh. 